there were some there were some questions about this in the beginning, but people were thinking, uh, oh, maybe, you know, there's no it's just, you know, these these groups were able to get a lot of heat on this bakery, but you obtained emails via a public records request. And what did you find between the Bureau of Labor and Statistics in Oregon and this, uh, L uh, this uh, LGBT group? Well, Aaron and Melissa Klein have long felt that the cards have been stacked against them. In this case, the way it's been tried in this administrative law system, uh, out of the Oregon Bureau of Labor and Industries. And during testimony a few months ago, uh, some sort of ties came up between the state officials at the Oregon Bureau of Labor and Industries and Basic Rights Oregon, which is the most powerful LGBT group in the state. So uh, I put in a public request for all communications between the two groups, and what I found is they uh, are in regular communication. The commissioner of the agency, of the state agency, uh, participated in multiple phone calls, uh, attended meetings, purchased tickets for hundreds of dollars to attend the LGBT groups, uh, fundraising events, and it really raises the question about whether or not Aaron and Melissa Klein are being entitled to a fair trial in this case. Yeah, it doesn't sound like they are, especially since there's that sort of relationship there. I mean, how has the Bureau of Labor and Industries, or have they, have they defended this at all, the association? The Oregon Bureau of Labor and Industries gave us a statement on the Daily Signal saying that they are pursuing this case fairly and trying to bring justice where justice needs to be served. But these emails really raise questions as to that. And we saw on Friday the lawyers for Aaron and Melissa Klein took these emails and uh, filed to have the case reopened uh, based on the idea that there could be a lot of potential collusion between these two groups uh, working together to strategize how to use best use the case for Aaron and Melissa, Melissa Klein to further uh, marriage equality in the yeah. state, which is uh, very w which is very problematic. I mean, whether or not you agree with what Aaron and Melissa did in refusing to make a cake for a same-sex wedding, everyone should agree that they should be entitled to a fair trial. It doesn't seem like that association would be very uh, that that's not something that's regular. This isn't normal, right? I mean, this is just, this is really rare to have that kind of an association and communication. In un any, any other normal court system, uh, it would be pretty clear that there's an unfair bias going on and the judge, uh, the commissioner might need to recuse himself for having such close ties to an LGBT group. The problem is that this case is being tried in an administrative law system. Administrative law is very different from a regular court system. Uh, the agent, the state agency that's bringing, that's uh, defending the Oregon's uh, Anti-Discrimination Act is the same agency that's uh, making the decision about whether or not Aaron and Melissa Klein are guilty and whether or not they uh, should pay a punishment and how much that punishment should be. So it will be very interesting to see if how they respond to the Klein's lawyers attempt to reopen the case to, inv to investigate uh, the ties between this LGBT group and themselves because they would in fact be pursuing investigation, uh, enabling investigation yeah. into uh, into their own agency. <laughs> Is that something that Sweet Cakes you think would be inclined to do? I know that you have right, that you had sent a number of uh, press requests uh, to the uh, the Bureau of Labor and Industries, and they ignored most of them. But do you think that Aaron Melissa Klein? I mean, do you? Uh, th was this something that they would uh, be interested in? I mean, because it seems like, you know, if you're having to pay six figures because you quote unquote, and at least that was in their legal documents when we quoted mentally raped, I mean, they had that in their documents. Uh, I mean, to me, that sounds like that's a fair enough ground to say there's something weird going on here. We want to reopen this and, and reinvestigate this and look at their associations and how it impacted negatively the outcome for us. Whatever it needs to remember in this case is this is a family that has five children and this is the government telling that family that they deserve to pay $135,000, which is enough to bankrupt the family uh, because of this cake refusal. So uh, it's it's very important not to lose sight and and and. And the, enti the emails raise questions about whether this case is being used not to pursue legitimate damages right. that the lesbian couple claims that this refusal caused, but to further a political agenda of marriage equality and to make a statement in Oregon. That's not what our justice system should be used for.